today. We have this uh, Sunday within the octave of Corpus Christi. So the epistle here again in San Antonio. And the epistle here for this um, second Sunday uh, after Pentecost, the Sunday within the octave of Corpus Christi, taken from St. Paul, St. John's first letter. Chapter 3. Dearly beloved, wonder not at the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in himself. <clears throat> in this we have known the charity of God. But if he hath laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He that hath the substance of this world, and shall see his brother in need, and shall shut up his bowels from him, how doth the charity of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word nor in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke chapter 14. And at that time Jesus spoke to the Pharisees this parable. A certain man made a great supper and invited many, and he sent his servant at the hour of the supper to say to them that were invited that they should come, for now all things are ready. And then Begon began all at once to make excuse. The first said to him, I need, uh, I, I have bought a farm, and must needs go out and see it. I pray thee, hold me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of, yoke of oxen, and I go to try them. I pray thee, hold me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And the servant returning told these things to his, to his Lord. And when the master of the house being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly and uh, into the streets and the gates and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the feeble, and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. But I say unto you, that none of those men, these men, that were invited, shall taste of my supper. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Amen. You better pray well. In any case, in this octave of this uh, Holy Eucharist, Feast of the Eucharist, we have the consideration of the seriousness of the Holy Eucharist. And two serious considerations. One of them is taken from the scripture reading today in the Holy Breviary. And we read in the Old Testament, and we read about the battle of Ophni and Phineas, who wanted to fight against the enemies of God, to fight against the Philistines. And the Philistines fought against the two priests, and they lost many thousand men, several thousand men in battle. And so the two priests then said, we will fight again on the morrow, but this time we will fight with the Ark of the Covenant. So they went and they got the Holy Ark of the Covenant, which David had carried into battle. And whenever this Ark was carried into battle, it brought victory to the Jews. And they brought the Ark into the camp of the Jews. And the two priests, Ophni and Phinehas, they saw that the, the, the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the camp for them. And the Philistines heard the great cry in the, ha in the camp of the Jews. And they said, what are, why are they so happy? We defeated them in battle today. Why are they so happy? And the word came to the Philistines, Behold the ark of their God. The presence of their God has come amongst them. The ark of the covenant carries the presence of the God of the Jews. And it is said that whenever that ark is brought into battle, the Jews cannot be defeated. Therefore the Philistines, who had just won the battle that day, were filled with great sorrow and great fear. 
But then one of the Philistines stood up and said, Let us die manfully. Because if we do not fight manfully tomorrow, we will be the slaves of the Jews. As we want them to be our slaves, we will become their slaves. And so they went into battle the next day. And the Philistines, with great fear, went into battle. And the Jews, with the priests of God, went into battle with great confidence because they had the Ark of the Covenant and the Old Testament presence of God amongst them. And what happened? There was a great slaughter. There were 20,000, or if we get the exact number, 20,000 Jews slain that day. A massive slaughter of the Jews. They were massacred. And the two priests who led the battle, they were also killed in the battle. And the word came to the Heli, the father of those two priests, who was in that same day that his two sons had died. And then Heli, an old man, when he heard that his two sons had died in battle and that the ark of the Lord was captured, he had a heart attack and fell backwards and died on the same day that his sons died. And the ark of the covenant was captured by the Philistines. And that was the end of that battle. And we read about that today in the Holy Bravery. And it is a teaching of us. Remember that there is an old, in the Old Testament, everything that happened in the Old Testament is a type of something true that happens in the New Testament. And the Ark of the Covenant is a symbol of the presence of God. But we have the real presence of God in the Blessed Sacrament. And two priests who were wicked, but they were true priests, they carried the Ark of the Lord into battle. And what happened? They were slaughtered. It was a complete massacre. And not only were they slaughtered, but they were slaughtered by enemies that were terrified, enemies that thought they were going to lose. Why did they lose the battle? Because they carried Christ into battle. And they were the enemies of Christ. They were carrying Christ into battle, but they were wicked priests. And this is a type of receiving Holy Communion unworthily. Whoever receives the Holy Eucharist unworthily keeps destruction and fire unto himself. And therefore the church teaches that St. Paul said, He who eats, let him eat. But let him know that if he eats the body and blood of Jesus Christ unworthily, eats unto his own destruction and not unto his own life. There are many souls today that say they need Holy Communion and they do not realize that as they receive Holy Communion and as they receive Holy Communion, not the friends of God, every time that they receive the Holy Communion, they eat unto destruction of their own souls. And this is the warning of the Scripture. And then there is a warning of the New Testament, which is taken in the Gospel and the Epistle today. And St. John gives a warning, is what must be inside of us if we are the followers of Christ? First of all, St. John says, that do not wonder, brethren, St. John, the apostle of charity. Dearly beloved, wonder not if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not abideth in death. And here St. John reminds us, who does not love, if I do not have love in my heart, if there is hatred in my heart, if love is not in my heart, then I abide in death. Who does not have love in his heart abideth in death. St. John has these most serious words. Why? Because what is the greatest gift that our Lord Jesus Christ gave us it is his own flesh. He said, my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. Now why did his flesh come to this earth? His flesh came to this earth to die for our sins. And St. John points it out. These simple truths that are most important. In this we have known the charity of God. Because he hath laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. In this we have seen God's charity in us, that God the Son became man, 
His flesh came on this earth to lay down his life for us. Therefore, the most sacrilegious thing that we can do is to have hatred in our hearts for our brethren, to have hatred in our hearts for anyone inside of our hearts, and then to receive the Holy Eucharist. This is to be abide in death. And this is what St. Paul, St. John says. This, this Sunday is always the octave of Corpus Christi. And on Corpus Christi, we consider the beauty of the Blessed Sacrament and how it is the greatest gift of God. That was Thursday, a couple of days ago. Now on this day, we are, we are the third day within the octave of Corpus Christi, and we consider that the body and blood of Christ is a most serious thing. God did not lightly become man. God the Son did not lightly become man to die on the cross, to lay it on his life for love of us, unless he wanted that love to be transferred into us. We have been baptized. We have received the true faith inside of our bodies and inside of our hearts. Therefore, what must we do? We must be ready to lay down our lives for our brethren. And this is a great struggle for us. We must be ready to lay down our lives for our brethren. So therefore, remember the most sacred seriousness of the most blessed sacrament. It demands of us, it requires of us, a sacred charity by which we love our brothers. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ say on Holy Thursday night? Love those, love one another as I have loved you. This is the new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And what does that mean? To love the unlovable, to love those that are crucifying us, to love those that hate us, to love those that stone us and crucify us. This is our requirement in Christ. And it is not a request. It is a demand. And remember that when St. Stephen died, the first one to die, the friend of our Lord Jesus Christ, He's the first martyr. And what did St. Stephen say as he was being stoned to death by his enemies? What did he say? He said, Lord, do not lay this sin up to their charge, but let them be forgiven. And the Lord heard the prayer of St. Stephen, and the most wicked man that stood in that crowd was Saul of Tarsus. He had a great wickedness in his heart. He had a great hatred not only of St. Stephen, but of everything St. Stephen stood for. He had a hatred for Jesus Christ. He had a hatred for all of Christianity. And he had made a vow that he would devote his life to destroying the followers of Christ. And what happened to Saul of Tarsus? Because of the prayer of Stephen for his enemy, Saul of Tarsus, Saul was knocked off of his horse by the power of God and by the prayer of St. Stephen. And Saul said, and, and Saul heard a voice and from heaven saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why do you persecute me, Saul? And Saul said, Lord, whom do I persecute? And say, our Lord Jesus Christ said to Saul of Tarsus, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you persecute. Now remember on the day of judgment what's going to happen. Lord, when did we treat you badly? When did we curse you? When did we not feed you when we saw you naked? Uh, when we saw you hungry? When did we not clothe you when we saw you naked? And our Lord will say to us on the day of judgment, what you have done to the least of these brethren, the least are the ones that are the least worthy, but will the ones that are the farthest from us and the farthest from God. What you have done to the least of these brethren, you have done unto me. You do not know that it was me that you walked by on the side of the road. You do not know that it was me whom you hated. You do not know it was me whom you fought against during your life. But I am in all those whom you hate. I am in all those that are the least of your brethren. And therefore, remember that we only knew that it is Christ whom we hate when we hate our brethren. And St. John says... Who, you, who does not, he who does not love his brethren, how can he love God? If you do not love your brethren whom you can see, how can you love God whom you do not see? And whoever hated his brethren and saith that he loved God, he is a liar. And whoever does not love his brethren but saith he loved God is a liar. And liars do not achieve the kingdom of heaven. 
Liars are not made to get, do will not see God face to face. What is necessary for us is to live according to the truth, and the truth is God the Son made man. And when did Jesus Christ say, I am the truth? When did he say that? He saved those words for Holy Thursday night. He saved those words for the day in which he would be betrayed. And then when he would stand before Pilate, be betrayed by his own apostle, and abandoned by all his apostles, that's when he said, I am the truth. And he stands upon the truth, and he is the truth, and he does not budge because of the hatred of his enemies and the failure of his friends. The Blessed Sacrament gives us the strength to follow this law. Let us not eat it unworthily. Let us not consume it unworthily. Let us have a great love of this Holy Sacrament and let it turn us into charity. So we know that it's late, but in any case, we'll close to this and God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.